Splash Clan year three. We are here, finally. I have I have made it further with Splash Clan than I did with Dead Clan. Wow. Yeah, I'm not gonna take any more time to like ramble. We're gonna we're gonna get into the video. So at the start of this year, Gannet Star was still struggling with what she was struggling with last year. She feels as though the weight of being leader is absolutely crushing her and she feels as though she's losing it. Early in the year, one of her kits was caught in a two-leg trap and was taken away by two legs. Her already awful mental health plummeted and she could hardly bear the grief of losing one of her kits. After this, she began to encourage cats to fight on border patrols and became incredibly antagonistic towards the cats of her own clan. At one point in the year, Lightspot stepped up and tried to calm her down. He explained to her that she needed to get help and that she wasn't being a very good leader. Gannet Star took this as a challenge and ordered Snapfern to punish Lightspots for this. The three fought and all were injured by the end of it. Gannet Star received a scarred tail due to the fight, however, it took multiple months for it to heal because of an infection. While she was in the medicine den, another one of her kits was injured by a dog and suffered a mangled tail. It didn't take long for her kit's tail to become infected and for them to die as a result of the infection. Now Gannet Star only has one kit left in the clan, and we'll get to who that is later. The only thing that kept her going is knowing that her clan still needed her. She desperately wanted to get out of the medicine den and get back to work. After spending six entire months in the medicine den, she was finally free to go and wondered if her clan had been weakened by her not being able to lead. Even though this year was full of grief and pain for her, she feels as though things are getting better and she looks to the future, ready for what's in store. As of this year, she's grown closer to Snapfern as she feels she can trust her more than anyone else in the clan after she ordered her to help in punishing light spots. What's even more interesting is not only does she feel as though she can trust her more, but she's actually developing some romantic feelings towards Snapfern. As for Light Spots, she doesn't actually feel negatively about him even after what had happened. She feels a lot of platonic love for the guy, and I have a feeling it's because she knows he likes her so much. Gannet Star knows that a lot of the cats in Splash Clan are not on her side and are hesitant to follow her, even though she's not exactly self-aware of how bad of a leader she is. Gannet Star knows that a lot of the cats in Splash Clan are not on her side and are hesitant to follow her, even though she's not exactly self-aware of how bad of a leader she is. She wants nothing more than to know that the cats in her clan are on her side, and so she's decided to do this by manipulating her clanmates to stand by her side. She knew Snapfern's been struggling with not knowing her purpose in the clan, and so she gave her a purpose by ordering her to punish Light Spots. She acknowledged Light Spots after she and Snapfern punished him, even though for the past two years she'd mostly ignored him due to him being overwhelmingly in love with her. On top of this, she's kept a close watch on the apprentices and has tried slowly to get them on her side as well. Brackenshade, like Gannet Star, is still struggling with the same exact things he was from last year, that being his doubts on whether or not he's a good deputy. One of the positives from this year, though, is that there are plenty of kits in the clan, which means that all the warriors were competing for apprentices of their own. Since there were six kits and ten warriors in the clan, it meant that most of them were going to get an apprentice. However, with two of Gannet Star's kits gone and multiple cats being sick or injured this year, it meant soon enough there became a shortage of mentors in the clan. Gannet Star even even considered giving Longpool two apprentices due to the shortage, but it worked out in the end. Brackenshade got his third apprentice this year, that being Downpaw, even though he had his eye on Curlpaw initially. While this year was generally pretty chill for Brackenshade, he was injured multiple times this year. And yes, he sprained his paw because he wasn't paying attention again, but at one point, while on patrol with Gannet Star and Snapfern, he tried to take down an octopus laying on the shore to take back his prey, but he was attacked by it, and the octopus hurt his ear with its beak. His ear was fine in the end, and he didn't even gain a scar from it, but the image of this was so funny to me, I had to draw him with the octopus. And as for his relationships, Brackenshade still hasn't really gained any major relationships with, with anyone yet, aside from feeling security with Gannet Star. He still got a crush on Longpool, and now has a crush on Weed Speckle, which I'm pretty sure he didn't have last year. <laughs> The cat 
Now, on to Light Gale and Jade Zinnia, who just like last year, I'll talk about together, since individually not a whole lot happened between them. They had their babies! They had three kits who they named Clove Kit, Down Kit, and Gorge Kit, and I love them all. The two couldn't have been happier to be parents together. Jade Zinnia at the start of this year struggled a bit, mostly because of his injured leg from last year. It was still not fully healed and eventually became infected. Light Gale was frantically trying to find ways to help him and even went to the other clans for ideas. Jade Zinnia survived the injury, of course, but his leg is now permanently twisted. The same month Jade Zinnia recovered, he decided to retire to the Elder's Den, not because of his injury, but because he realized he was old enough to do so, and based on his bout of laziness from last year, he worried the other warriors would not accept him back into their ranks very kindly. Jade Zinnia is now comfortable being a father alongside Light Gale and being able to be an elder. This means he no longer gets in trouble for lounging around camp and spending all of his time in the Medicine Den alongside Light Gale. As for Light Gale's relationships, he's still fondest of Jade Zinnia, of course. He loves him more than anyone else in the clan, admires him, and feels incredibly safe and secure around him. Aside from that, he's still close buddies with Snapfern, but has gained additional platonic love towards Weed Speckle and Brackenshade. As for what had happened between Gannet Star, Snapfern, and Light Spots, the whole situation made him admire Light Spots more. Knowing that he was able to put his romantic feelings towards their leader aside to address some serious concerns made Light Spots seem a whole lot better of a guy than he had initially thought he was. And as for his own kids, he loves them all, but is closest with his daughter Downpaw. As for Jade Zinnia, he likes Snapfern, Gannet Star, and Weed Speckle the best of his clanmates, and of course, loves Light Gale as well as their three kids. Snapfern had quite the interesting year. At this point, basically the entire clan knew that she was having some serious doubts about joining the clan, and on top of that, she began to wonder if there was actually a place for her in the clan. Sure, she does her duties perfectly fine, but she felt as though everyone in the clan was or had an identity of their own, and she felt as though she was lacking in that. She tried to give advice to others, hoping that maybe she was good at that. She tried helping Light Gale gather herbs out in the forest and organize them. She tried stepping up and helping with the apprentices like Brackenshade does but uh, nothing seemed to feel right. At least, until Gannet Star ordered her to punish Light Spots. Even though she was injured by the fight, she felt a satisfaction that she hadn't felt since she first joined the clan. She felt like Gannet Star had given her a purpose, and she began to see her leader in a new light. As for her relationships, something that became clear to me while looking over them is that Snapfern, as of this year, has romantic feelings for three cats in the clan. Bracken Shade, Gannet Star, and Light Spots. Did did Gannet Star choose her out of all the cats in the clan to punish Light Spots because she knew Snapfern had feelings for him? Not only that, but Light Spots reciprocated those feelings. Hmm. <laughs> this whole situation is. Whew, it's, uh, it's definitely very interesting. Aside from that, she's closest to Light Gale in particular, while also being close with Longpool, Jade Zinnia, and Brackenshade. And now on to Light Spots. Earlier this year, he was working hard to make sure that everyone in the clan could see how strong and reliable of a warrior he was. Most importantly, he wanted to make sure Gannet Star noticed, but 
She didn't, since she was caught up in the grief of losing one of her kits to the two legs. What makes that whole situation worse is that the patrol one of Gannet Star's kits was taken away on was led by Light Spots himself. Gannet Star from then on began to be more antagonistic towards him, and in response, he tried to set a good example for the kits in the clan, hoping that she'd soon enough realize that it was only an accident one of her kits was taken away. Then he stood up to her, tired from how poor of a leader she'd been and hoped that she would understand. Clearly, as we've established, she didn't, and punished him alongside Snapfern in a fight. He recovered relatively quickly from his injuries, but I doubt he's recovered mentally from it. Ever since the attack, he's become even weirder, telling the cats of the clan about his strange dreams and telling the apprentices entirely false stories. The attack clearly affected him on some level, but externally he seems just as happy as he usually is. He later got his second apprentice, that being Curlpaw, and was very thankful to receive her in particular as an apprentice because he found Clovepaw, one of Jade Zinnia and Lightgale's kits, painfully annoying and still does. He's still close with his buddy Jade Zinnia, but last year he's grown very close with Lightgale in particular, probably because of the time he spent recovering in the medicine den. Aside from that, his relationships haven't really changed. Just like last year, Weed Speckle had a pretty uneventful year. Because of her fondness towards Light Gale, Weed Speckle tends to linger around the medicine den often, which caused her to be around for plenty of things that happened this year. Gannet Star was taken to the medicine den and given herbs to calm her down after she learned her kit was taken away by two legs, and later Eves dropped on Gannet Star when she was taken there again alongside Snapfern and Light Spots. She overheard Gannet Star talking to Light Spots and telling him that she was impressed with him standing up to her. It wasn't long after that she caught White Cough, which ended up becoming Green Cough, causing Light Gale a lot of worry. Luckily, she was able to recover, even if it made her sad to be stuck in the medicine den for months on end with her sickness. She's still very close with Lightgale and has her crushes on Thunder Isle and Brackenshade, but in this year, she's become friends with Jade Zinnia and has developed a crush on Longpool. First things first, Thunder Isle had her babies! She had three kittens who she named Curl Kit, Bow Kit, and Dappled Kit. As for the other parent of the kits, it's a cat from another clan and she's keeping the identity of the other parent a secret. And my guess is because it's a cat from Hayes clan. One thing I keep noticing is that she's seemingly very aggressive towards a quote unquote certain cat every time they walk by, and she doesn't feel negatively towards anyone in Splash Clan, so I have a feeling it's probably the cat from Hayes Clan she was with. For whatever reason, they had a falling out, and now Thunder Isle hates the other parent of her kits. This year, she began thinking about the idea of becoming deputy someday, and the more she thought about it, the more she fell in love with the idea. Her being deputy and being in charge of everyone alongside the leader sounds awesome to her, and she hopes that someday she'll be able to achieve that. Before she even left the nursery, she was given Clovepaw, one of Jade's and Light Gale's kits as an apprentice due to the shortage of healthy warriors in the clan. It was only a month after that when her kits were apprenticed, so, you know, they were old enough to be left alone for a while. Remember how last year and the year before I mentioned she constantly seems to be plotting something? She had the seems to be plotting something status twice this year. Again. Seriously, Thunder Isle, what is your deal? <laughs> as of the end of this year, she caught Yellow Cough and is in the medicine den. Will she recover? Uh, who knows, but you know, we can only hope she does. Thunder Isle is easily one of the most interesting cats in the clan and I really hope she sticks around. She still has her crush on Weed Speckle and is the closest with her in particular, but has also developed a close relationship with Jade Zinnia. Aside from that, she's of course close with her three kits, Curlpaw, Bowpaw, and Dappled Paw, and loves them all equally. Longpool had a pretty nice year compared to, you know, basically everyone else. I, I think we've established pretty well, based on last year, that he loves babies. <laughs> and so the clan having six kittens in the nursery at one time made him so happy. He spent most of the year playing with them and trying to make sure that he was a good enough role model for them to potentially look up to. If the kits needed to be watched and their parents were absent, it was always Longpool who stepped up. Early in the year, he seemed to always have a gaggle of kits following him wherever he went. Just like 
the other warriors in the clan, he hoped that he would get one of the kits to apprentice, and he did. He received Gorge Paw as his second apprentice, and even after the six kits were all apprenticed, he still spent plenty of time around them and told them silly, not at all true stories. Really, the only major thing that happened to him this year, aside from him hanging out with the apprentices, was that he was nearly bitten by a snake that got into camp, but Jade Zine came to the rescue and threw the snake out before it could hurt anyone. He's still not particularly close with anyone in the clan, but he still got his crush on Bracken Shade. On top of that, he's developed crushes on both Weed Speckle and Thunder Isle. I wonder if anything is actually going to happen between any of these guys. I would love to see Longpool have kits of his own in the future. Torn Run, or Torn Paw as he was called last time, is now a warrior. Ganon starts three kits for all made warriors at the very start of this year, even though it was clear that they weren't necessarily ready to be made warriors. I'll confess something here. I, I switched Splash Clan over from the developmental version of the game to the most recently released stable version, which I, I'm pretty sure is the reason for Ganon Star's kits becoming warriors at the same time, even if their experience levels were not at warrior level. But honestly, <laughs> even if this was probably a bug, this checks out. Gannet Star may have not been able to make her kids apprentices at four months instead of six, but she is perfectly within her right to make them warriors when she, as their mother, sees fit. Tornron was honored for his commitment, and as he became a warrior, it was clear that he was not the strict and bossy young apprentice he used to be. He was now a stern, responsible, and ambitious warrior who was ready to serve the clan and certainly ready for his first apprentice, at least in his mind. And practically, every part of daily life, he tries to follow his mother's body language. He stands up straight, ensures his fur is well-groomed, and tries to speak as perfectly as possible, even if he's only talking to some kids. It wasn't long after him and his siblings became warriors when his sister was taken away by two legs, and what made this even worse is that he was on that very patrol alongside Light Spots. Even though deep down, Gannet Star knew there was nothing either of them could have done to save her, her attitude towards the both of them changed, and she hasn't treated Torn Run the same ever since. She still loves her son, of course, and she would be a massive liar if she said otherwise, but she can't help her grief. It wasn't that long after when his other sister succumbed to the injury she received from a dog attack, and the only thing he could do to distract himself from the overwhelming grief was to work and take on extra patrols. He wished he could just sleep away his sorrows, but he refused. At the end of this year, he also caught Green Cough and is sick in the medicine den alongside Thunder Isle. This year, Tornron got an apprentice of his own, that being Thunder Isle's kit, Dappled Paw, but he wished he had gotten Curl Paw instead. I, I think it's really funny how most of the warriors were trying to get certain apprentices, and I I'm, I am sure Gannet Star knew that they all wanted to mentor specific kits, and her being the source of conflict that she is, decided to mix everything up and not give a single cat who they wanted. <laughs> he hasn't really made a connection with anyone in the clan, but he is of course close with his mom and his two sisters. What makes Torn Run really funny though is that is he's joined Snap Fern, Weed Speckle, and Longpool in also being romantically interested in Bracket Chain. Why is everyone in love with him? As mentioned before, Icy Whisker became a warrior alongside her siblings this year. She was honored for her dedication, and by the time she became a warrior, she had chilled out quite a bit. Icy Whisker was always pretty relaxed, even as an apprentice, but now she's fully embraced that. And uh, I think we can thank her mentor Snapfern for that. I think Snapfern also influenced her to be interested in nest decoration, since Icy Whisker had started spending time putting lavender in her nest just like Snapfern does. She's a very intelligent member of the clan, being able to problem solve and work through solutions faster than any cat in the clan. Just like Torn Run, she really wanted an apprentice of her own, and she was certain she would get it. I mean, Gannet Star is her mom, and I'm sure if she was just really insistent about it, Gannet Star would let her mentor whoever she wanted. In particular, she had her eyes on both Dappled Kit and Curl Kit. It was later in this year, though, when she was attacked by a dog and her tail was badly injured. So yes, Icy Whisker was the one of Gannet Star's kits who died, and I am devastated. She spent the last few months of her life wondering what the clan thought of her now. She was never able to be given an apprentice of her own, and to show how great of a warrior she was and was forced to watch as her own brother got to mentor one of the kits she wanted to mentor. Two months after the attack, she died and went to Star Clan, where from there she's making sure to keep her eyes on the apprentices she never got to teach. And that leaves Jellyfish Speckle, the final of Gannet Star's kits. And if you've paid attention to the video, you've probably put it together by now. And yes, 
jellyfish speckle was the cat who was taken away by two legs. She was named a warrior at the start of this year and was honored for her loyalty, which makes sense considering how close she and her mom are. Even though initially she wasn't impressed with Brackenshade being her mentor, in the end, he influenced her in a lot of different ways. She picked up on his abrasiveness and has also become a bit more strict and into following the rules. But deep down, she's still the feisty young apprentice she was before. After becoming a warrior, she daydreamed about all the cool things she was going to get to do now and couldn't have been happier. It was only two months that after she became a warrior though, that while on patrol with light spots and her brother Torn Run, she was caught in a two-leg trap and was taken away by two legs. She hasn't returned yet and so I can only hope she will because she's my favorite and I want her back so badly. <laughs> Jellyfish Speckle wants to get home more than anything, but seems to be unable to return for whatever reason. She's so lost and scared, she has no idea what to do and is trying to put herself into the paw steps as though she knows. Maybe she can get out of the situation if she thinks like her mom. Or what if she thinks like light spots does? He's a bit strange and might be able to see something here that she doesn't. It's clearly not working though because she hasn't returned yet. Now we can finally talk about the new members of the clan, starting with the oldest, Clovepaw. Clovepaw is the oldest of Jade, Zinnia, and Light Gale's kits and grew up being the most well-behaved of the litter, being careful and quiet. It's not that he didn't want to break the rules or never did, it's just he was a whole lot more careful about it than his siblings were, which allowed him to stay out of trouble for the most part. He was later apprenticed to Thunder Isle and couldn't have been happier to finally be an apprentice. He kept all of his excitement on the inside though and preferred to stay as relaxed and calm as possible through everything, no matter what emotion he was having internally. This meant that he's very good at hiding his emotions, and even though later in the year he had a bit of a rough time since his mentor was sick and he was unable to train, not a single cat was aware of his problems, or at least not a single cat aside from his dad, Jade Zinnia. There's not a cat in the clan that he's as close to as he is with Jade Zinnia. He loves his other dad, Light Gale, too, but he has a special connection with Jade Zinnia. He's close with his siblings as well, and he has a bit of a crush on his fellow apprentice, Baopaw. The next of Jade Zinnia and Light Gale's kits is Downpaw, who is easily the most spunky and fierce of the trio of kits, and upon meeting her for the first time, oh, you're gonna know it. She was an absolute menace as a kit, playing the roughest and craziest of all the kits in the nursery, eating bugs, rolling on the ground, and proclaiming herself as the clan leader in all of their games. She was later made an apprentice, and Brackenshade was chosen as her mentor, presumably since he did so well mentoring Jellyfish Speckle, who seemed to be very similar, so he might be able to calm down Downpaw's intensity as well. When she first became an apprentice, she mimicked Clove paw and hid her excitement inside because she thinks her brother is just so cool. The one issue she has with him though is him always pretending like he has a super duper special relationship with Jade Zinnia because they both do actually. Clove paw struts around and acts like none of his siblings can relate, but Downpaw absolutely can. Aside from that, she of course loves her dad, Light Gale, as well as her other sister, Gorge Paw, and has a bit of a crush developing on the other apprentice, Curl Paw. Gorgepaw is the youngest of Jade Zinnia and Light Gale's kits. She's the most playful and lighthearted of the kits, always wanting to play, have fun with her friends and family, and being at the center of attention. Gorgepaw is just a Adorable. She's a bit troublesome, as all young cats are, but never gets into any trouble maliciously. She later became an apprentice, and Longpool was picked to be her mentor, as the two share a playful demeanor. Gorgepaw was always fascinated by the lives of the warriors of her clan and would go to them for guidance and to spend time with them. At one point in the year, she comforted Icy Whisker as she was alone in the medicine den. Though she didn't understand the pain Icy Whisker was going through, she wanted to know all about warrior life, and her dozens of questions were able to distract Icy Whisker from whatever pain she was feeling. In general, she's closest with her dads and her littermates but hasn't created much of a bond with anyone else.
And now we can move on to Thunder Owl's kits. Curlpaw is the oldest, and as a kit, he was very nervous and scared. I imagined early on that he was a whole lot smaller than his litter mate, since he tries really hard to not get stepped on by warriors. He was later apprenticed to Light Spots, who had only just recovered from the injuries he received from Ganet Star and Snapfern. It was because of this he felt insecure and worried that he was going to be judged for who his mentor was. He's nearing the end of his time as an apprentice alongside his litter mates in the Jade Light kits, and as a whole he feels positively about his mentor, but spent so much time avoiding him so he wouldn't be judged that the two didn't bond very well. Curlpaw seems to look up to Gannet Star a lot compared to the other cats. He is in complete awe of her leadership and wants to ensure that he's making not only his clan, but Gannet Star in particular proud. He's not close with anyone outside of his mom and his two siblings, but he's slowly developing a crush on Downpaw, meaning that the two both have little crushes on each other, which is really, really cute. Baopaw is the second of Thunder Isle's kits. She's a calm and careful young cat, and even though she somehow looks very similar to Downpaw, the two are total opposites. Baopaw is very paranoid and superstitious, which as a kid presented itself in an increased curiosity of the world around her, though not from a genuine curiosity, but because the unknown terrified her. For a moment, she even considered becoming a medicine cat, but realized that she'd have to speak with Clan, and the idea of speaking to her long-dead ancestors terrified her, so she stuck to being a warrior. Snapfern was picked to be her mentor, likely since the two are both calm and relaxed in their demeanor compared to the rest of the clan, and it seems like the two have a pretty nice relationship. Later in the year, while training, she left from a rock, but landed incorrectly, which caused her to sprain her paw. She was left injured for a few months, but is now better. Like the rest of her siblings, she hasn't formed any major relationships with the other cats in the clan besides her family, but she has a bit of a crush on Clove Paw, which means that just like Curl Paw and Down Paw, Clove Paw and Bow Paw have little crushes on each other, which is just so adorable. Dappled Paw is the final of Thunder Isle's litter of kits. As a kit in the nursery, he was easily the most polite and well-behaved. He grew up being curious about the world around him and wanted to know everything he possibly could. Even though he was the smartest of the kits, he was still treated as one, which frustrated him. When he was a kit, he acted like he was twice his age and had all the necessary knowledge a cat that old should have, so why was he still being treated like a little kit? Even though he felt like he was a kit for ages and ages, he was eventually made an apprentice and Torn Run was picked to be his mentor. He was very satisfied with Ganasar's choice and mentor for him. He knew that clan's personalities inside and out and found that Torn Run was a very well put together cat. Not only that, but he was smart, intelligent, and stuck to the rules just like Dappled Paw did. Even though he was more mature than everyone else, he was still just as young and inexperienced as his siblings and the other apprentices. He dreaded doing his apprentice duties and acted super angsty about basically everything like a normal kid. As for his relationships, he's not overly close with anyone in particular since he's so overly focused on being smarter than everyone. He has fondness for his litter mates, Curl Paw and Bow Paw, as well as his mother, Thunder but aside from that, he hasn't created any real bonds with the cats in the clan. And that concludes Splash Clan Year 3. I, I hope you all enjoyed. As of the time I'm recording this, I have played through Year 4 of Splash Clan, which should be coming out in not after the next video. I'm space I'm specifically spacing out Splash Clan videos so there is one video in between them. So the next Splash Clan video is not going to be the next video, but the one after that. This outro isn't scripted. I don't know if that's obvious. This, this outro isn't scripted. Anyway, that's the end. I hope you all enjoyed, and uh, I'll be back next week with another video.